one of the questions from the chat is um, when you were um, applying for these jobs, did you have to provide statements on research and or teaching and how detailed did they need to be? So, um, James, I'll start with you. Hey, um, yes, I did have to apply, um, apply with a statement. I guess I, I applied to four, one, two, yeah, four permanent positions um, across the end of my PhD and while I was a postdoc. Um, and all four required a, a statement and they were all broadly uh, the same in terms of what they required. So it was a statement about your research plans in the short and long term, a statement about um, how you can contribute to teaching, which I guess jars a bit with my last answer where I didn't actually have much teaching experience to go on, but you, you pick yourself up, of course. And then um, also a statement about you, how you're a collegial member of staff, so your admin roles, essentially. Um, and I guess, I think, did you ask about the detail of those as well? Yeah, I can see, see Julia's nodding. She's, um, I've actually just loaded <laughs> it up here and this, the, the statement I had for the job that I just got was two and a half pages for research, teaching and admin. So it wasn't overly long. Um, if you think about a, a selection panel, they're going to have, I don't know, 50, maybe even more applications to go through. So if you can get your messages across concisely, um, I think that's key. And like I said, I applied to four. The first two were a complete and utter waste of time. I didn't give it any thought. Um, but the second two applications, I got a lot of feedback on my, my cover letter and my statement. And I would really recommend getting as many people as possible to look at that. And if you can, get your eyes on people who have applied for jobs before you and see what they wrote and try and sort of get an idea for what's being said. Um, so I guess in that regard, I'm happy to share mine with anyone who emails me. If you want to see it, I've got no problem sharing that. All right. Does anyone else have anything unique to add to that, seeing that we're only five minutes, we only have five minutes again? Or is it the same for you guys? I will be very concise, but uh, I applied uh, to, I applied to a, a lot of jobs, uh, both in France and in, uh, in the US. Um, and I think uh, the statements, these statements are very, very important and they will be different depending on uh, the positions you're applying to. So it's very important that uh, you know what is expect expected. So for example, I did write some statements uh, like uh, the type of same sort of length that um, what James uh, just said, uh, especially for jobs in the US. Um, but in France, for example, uh, the position I have now, it's a much more detailed uh, statement. It's like a 20 page, it's almost like a proposal for a grant uh, where you really have to, to explain uh, what you are going to do in terms of research. And also something you always have to think about when you write a statement is uh, what is the audience? Because often people reviewing this statement are not uh, experts in the, in the field uh, you are uh, working yourself. And so you have to be able to uh, get across why what you're proposing to do is important. Uh, and, and you have to make it uh, important for someone who perhaps doesn't understand the detail of, uh, of what you're doing. And at the same time, you have to be able to show that you are an expert in your field. Uh, for the case, there would be someone in the panel who is uh, actually an expert. So they are fairly tricky to write and they are very important. So what Jen said about uh, trying to make sure that some people uh, read your statement and review it before you send it uh, is also uh, something important to do. Do the other ladies have anything to add or? I agree with everything that's been said, especially about the feedback and asking some other colleague who successfully applied their, their research statement to see what it looks like. And they improve with time usually. So yeah, with uh, taking into account the feedback. Mariana? Yeah, I, well, he, here in, I don't know, I don't know if all, in all Latin American countries, but at least in Mexico, we have like three lines that we need to detail in the in the applications. 
obviously the, the research plan, also the um, formation of students by courses or by thesis projects, but also the um, like a social appropriation of science, some kind of plans on that. So I think like to, to be involved in the three lines to me was an advantage in the, in the position to have like a differentiated actions in the three lines. But uh, when I applied to another position in, in France, actually, um, they were just focused in the research line, no? Like I, I needed to tell with a lot of, of ideas and event, um, not just one project, but some of the projects that I, I wanted to collaborate with the persons there. And I needed to, to know exactly which, which person need to collaborate and every topic that they manage, no? So for me was, um, I mean, was, I, I did that, but was new because I was expecting just to attend in my online research, but they needed to know in which way I need to, I, I be able to collaborate with one of uh, each person uh, in, the, in the Institute. So I think it's really important to, to read <laughs> the call and to know exactly what kind of institution is because the institutions are really, <laughs> different um, and they have also di really different kind of evaluations so that's why also the difference in the course i think it's that's the advice you guys gave there is brilliant i mean when you start off you just you read sometimes when you get feedback and it can be disheartening but as you keep on going on and on it really helps when you get more people to read and the experience and the practice really helps you get into it and yeah i can't that's that was really good advice so to finish up, we're going to ask the last question. Um, in your days today, what's the most remarkable moment that you have during your in your job? So, Ellen, do you want to take it up, take take us off? So, what is your most remarkable moment during your current job? Oh, uh, <laughs> I haven't thought about this. Most remarkable, I think it has to be some uh, some fieldwork uh, experience. Actually, a recent fieldwork experience. Uh, so it's not my daily job. I wouldn't say it's remarkable, but it's uh, being on top of uh, Viarica and staring at uh, staring at the lava lake in Chile. Julia. Um, that's a hard one. Um, I'd say, well, perhaps in my case, it's uh, I've 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 two years ago I've decided to. To, to change course in my um, like uh, research field. And I was a physical volcanologist and I decided to work on the health impact of uh, volcanic emissions. And that meant learning a lot about biology and learning to work in a biology department. And so working this interdisciplinarity actually is very, very exciting. And it was a lot of uh, effort uh, to, to, to be able to switch like that. But in the end, uh, it's uh, it's very it's it's yeah it's very exciting and and I'm I'm very happy I did it. Mariana. Yes, I think my my happiest moment was when I w w w uh, went the first time to Stromboli, <laughs> and I I look at this volcano and I hit this volcano and I was yes I want to do this you know I was in the master. So um, I think that was the, the happiest and uh, thinking in the extreme, like the other extreme, like the, one of the hardest moments was um, after PhD looking just <laughs> for a fixed position in one of those applications. I was, I think uh, was a really, really hard moment because I was looking for um, collaborations in that institution and I was just talking with the people before, some days before uh, the seminary, the formal seminary. And some of these researchers uh, say to me, I don't care what you research. I, 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 can, I cannot collaborate with you. Uh, you are too young. You are in another topic. You are not welcome here. Um, that, that kind of comments are very, really tough comments. So for me, it was a really, really hard moment because I was, um, I mean, I was insecure about doing this seminar uh, to that position, but at the end, for me, it was an experience that many times, and I want to do, I want to add that comment because it's true. Many times the calls, not not always, but many times the calls in the in the world, 
they have already many internal problems in the team groups of, of the departments. So when they uh, give these open calls, many times there are many, many information that we don't know that we're applying just to have a fixed position. And we arrive to a place with a, a conflict for the position, for the topic, because they have already candidates, because there's a, a old position. So I, I think these are not part of us. No, these are just uh, part of them. And we need to deal with them in, a, I mean, in the most um, equanimous way and to let those things and don't give up. <laughs> That's all. And James, do you want to head to your, um, to finish up, to wrap it up for us? Yeah, I guess I'll, um, I'll skip over field work because that's a bit obvious and these people have covered it far better than I could. So um, I guess the most rewarding things recently have all been uh, student focus. So it could be my first PhD student getting his first paper published. That was pretty rewarding, but also seeing students that I've taught over three or four years go on to get um, really successful jobs or further study or simply just getting uh, feedback from students I'm teaching currently about how they're enjoying the course or they're learning something and they they really want to sort of take that on um, take that on further yeah that's yeah my most rewarding things currently all right yeah I think it's when we get to have our volcano offices and admire them as someone said in the chat but also connect with our students or our colleagues in some way that's really rewarding that at the end of the day that's all you can ask for so we've gone a bit over time but i want to just thank everyone before i hand over back to sam for allowing me to moderate the session and for our panelists for their answers and their insights into the questions that we asked and to, for everyone for joining uh, joining us today so sam back over to you Yeah, thanks so much to everyone for being here and to our panelists and Laia. So a big round of virtual applause.